Let's talk about alternate data streams. An alternate data stream is another part of a file. It's a different way of storing information within the NT file system. And the reason it was created was to support the Macintosh file system, actually, which has this thing called a resource fork. And a resource fork is where you would store like an icon file. So the icon file doesn't actually show up in the file system to a user, but the operating system can read that icon file and present it as being part of the application. It doesn't actually get stored in the executable, like for example, a Windows executable, it gets stored in this resource fork. So when they created Windows NT, they knew they needed to support this Macintosh idea of resource forks and the way they did it was creating this notion of an alternate data stream. Now we don't support resource forks or the Macintosh file system anymore under Windows, but the alternate data stream has continued to exist in spite of that. So what would we do with an alternate data stream or how would we make use of an alternate data stream? Well, the first thing is, let me show you how to actually create one. So I'm going to create a file, first of all, just using the echo command. And you can see that I've got a file called stuff.txt. It's 18 bytes and I can actually type it. So I've got stuff.txt and you can see it says exactly what I created it to have. Now, once I've got that file, I can do something similar. And what I'm going to do is use stuff.txt, but I'm going to create an alternate data stream. And I do that using this colon operator here. And I'm going to call it hidden stuff.txt. Now I can show you stuff.txt, it's still 18 bytes. And the reason for that is the alternate data stream doesn't actually go against the file in terms of that file handle only points to the original stream and a directory or the DIR command doesn't show alternate data streams. So all you're going to see is the primary stream associated with that particular file. So what could I do here? Well, I could try to type this and I'm going to reference it the way I reference alternate data streams. And I'm gonna get the file name correct. Now type doesn't support alternate data streams either. Okay, so I've got this data out there. Well, how am I gonna get it out? Well, as it turns out, Notepad supports alternate data streams. So I can do Notepad and reference the alternate data stream. And you can see up here in the title bar, it says stuff.txt colon hidden stuff.txt because it supports the alternate data stream and it knows that's how to reference this particular chunk of data on the disk. So what else can I do with this? Well, let's make a directory here and I'm going to call it Wubble and I'm going to go into the directory Wubble and now let me do some hidden stuff attached to a directory and I'm going to echo that out to that. Now there's nothing in here. So I've got nothing in the directory and let's see if I can use notepad to access this file. 
Well, it turns out Notepad can't get to things that are attached to the directory either. But I do have this program called Streams, which is one of the SysInternals programs, and I've got it right here. And so let's take a look at Wubble and see what Streams says. Well, Stream says there's an alternate data stream, colon hidden dir.txt, and even though I can't use Notepad or any of the other ways of getting it, it's still stored on the disk in an alternate data stream. So what else could I do? Well, I said I've got the streams executable. So let's echo the streams.exe into stuff.txt colon streams.exe. So now I've got an alternate data stream that's storing that executable. And I can run streams against it. And I can see hidden stuff.txt and streams.exe. And those are both files that are sitting there or alternate data streams that are attached to this primary stream called stuff.txt. So how would I go about accessing that executable now that it's attached to an alternate data stream? Well, I can use the start command and I would do stuff.txt colon streams.exe and I get an error. And the reason for that is up to Windows 7, you actually could do that. You could access these executables in alternate data streams and you could execute them. And Microsoft decided because it was starting to become a problem with malware hiding in alternate data streams, they decided there's really no legitimate reason for an executable to be run out of an alternate data stream. And so they now prevent executables from being run out of an alternate data stream. Now that executable is still hidden, it's still sitting on the disk and you would actually have to use something like streams in order to find that alternate data stream. But you can't execute it, so you'd actually have to get it out of the stream and execute it as a primary stream or a regular file if you actually wanted to execute it in that way. So I can hide files in the alternate data stream. I can no longer execute with Windows 7. And there are some other protections that have been made where we saw the error by attaching a stream to a directory. I can't actually access that directory anymore. Now there's a number of programs that I can use to go searching for streams. I've got this streams that's one of the sys internals programs. And you can see I could actually do a minus S and it would recurse subdirectories. So I could do streams minus S here and it would show me things that were in the subdirectories here. And strangely enough, it's showing no files with streams found, even though we know there are files with streams found in this directory. So We've got streams, there's a number of others, there's ADS Locator, and there are a few other programs that you can use to locate alternate data streams on your file system. And it used to be the case anyway that Microsoft would actually store data in alternate data streams in some older operating systems, you could look at all of the files in the Windows System32 directory and you would see a lot of alternate data streams there. Windows 7, I think, has cut down quite a bit on that. Um, but if you've got an older operating system, you could certainly run streams against the Windows System32 directory and see a lot of files with alternate data streams attached to them. So that's alternate data streams and just some ways of making use of them, finding where they live, and some things that you can do with them.